Dana is a swimming champion, preparing for her competitions on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her, and the police suspect three other swimmers. Hmm. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but the missing swimmer refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. Hmm. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? Ashley knows where Dana is. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to have her hair done before a competition. Laura was walking home from work when she heard screams coming from a nearby house. She immediately rushed in to help. She followed the voice and it guided her to a basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Three portals opened in front of her. Only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant venomous spiders. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock that was supposed to crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, seven hungry crocodiles were waiting for their next victim. Can you help Laura choose the right portal? Laura should pick the second portal. She can throw her shoes inside, wait for the giant stone to fall to the ground, and make her way around it. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day, the captain asked him to go to the hold and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. Sometime later, he discovered there was a hole in the side of the ship. More and more water was getting inside through this hole. How can Daniel get out? He can put on one of the life jackets that are in the room and wait for the water to fill the hole. This water will lift him and he'll be able to push the door open. Look at this man and three women attentively. Can you figure out which one of them is his real wife? It must be the girl on the left. Look, unlike the other two girls, she has nothing in her hands. At the same time, the man is holding a purse, which, if we're honest, doesn't match his style at all. Ben and his girlfriend, Amelie, went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a guy and a young woman. The man, bearded and rough looking, had a shovel in his hand. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. Mm. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Oh no. Follow me. I've been stuck here for way longer than him, but I think I know where the exit is. Hmm. Who should Ben and Amelie believe? Ben and Amelie decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for so long, why did she look so tidy and have fresh flowers in her hair? Look at this image. Can you figure out who came from the past? It's this guy. Take a closer look at his chest. He's wearing a shirt frill. Those were popular in the 19th century. How about this picture? Who's from the past? I bet it's this young girl. Look at her weird hat. And now, will you be able to spot the time traveler? It's this lady. Have a look. She's wearing clogs. Nature photographer Lydia was out taking pictures of trees and flowers in the park. She stopped when she noticed some weird chemical smell in the air. She took photos of all three factories in the area. When Lydia looked at the images later, 
she immediately realized which factory emitted toxic gas. Can you figure it out too? It's not the first factory. It seems abandoned. The second one is surrounded by trees and flowers. It means the smoke coming out of its funnels is safe. It's the third factory that's the toxic one. The trees around it look dry and unhealthy, and the flowers have turned black. At the airport, a furious traveler claimed that the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want compensation. After checking the passenger's info, an airport worker found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase. And now his bag was empty and a bit wet. But don't you think the whole situation is a bit suspicious? Hmm. Can you figure out what probably happened here? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted and the water leaked out and the man demanded compensation for his lost belongings. Lauren cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turned out that Jimmy hadn't gotten his portion. Someone had taken two buckets. Is it Uncle Patrick? He looks suspicious. Or maybe it's Lauren's son, Justin. He's wearing this creepy knowing smile. Or could Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings to get another portion? <laughs> what do you think? Where are the wings? Look at the dog! It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. Damien was at work when he found out he'd won the lottery jackpot. He told his accountant he wanted to give half of this money to his best friend, Logan. Yeah. But random people started showing up in the office calling themselves Logan to deceive the accountant and get the money. Oh. Can you figure out who the real best friend is? It's the guy wearing a matching bracelet with Damien. Oh, yeah. Emily was standing on one side of the river and Anna was on the other. Anna shouted to Emily to come and meet her and Emily did that. There was no bridge across the river, but she crossed it anyway without even getting wet. Hello. How did she do it? The river was frozen. Three people were stopped at the security check in an international airport. They were suspected of smuggling different stuff out of the country. The first man was heading to a beach resort. In his suitcase, there was a lot of stuff you could use at the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second man had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a bottle of expensive shampoo. Who's the smuggler? It's the third guy. He's bald. Why would he need this shampoo? Uh -oh. Five men were fishing in a boat not far from the shore. A big wave turned the boat over and all the men fell into the water. And still, not a single man got wet. How come? All the men were happily married. Stephen was driving to work when he realized he had left a folder with important documents at home. Oh, no. It was about 9 a.m. when he entered his house and saw a man leaving through the back door and running to a red car. Stephen called the police and told them about what had happened. Oh, no. Police officers didn't waste time and went to look for the criminal. After searching for 10 minutes, they spotted a similar looking car near a cafe. When they entered the place, there was only one customer there. One of the police officers came up to him. Is it your car? Where were you 20 minutes ago? The customer answered. Yeah, the car's mine, but I've been sitting here for more than an hour. 
the police officer immediately arrested him. Can you figure out why? The police officer noticed that the cafe only opened at 9 a.m. The guy couldn't have spent an hour there. Hmm, Hazel is a rock climber. She's packing bags for an expedition to Everest. Can you spot any extra items in her suitcase? It's unlikely that you would need these fancy high-heeled shoes in the mountains. Also, this fragile vase is useless on a hike. Hazel orders a taxi to go to the airport. She's using this app. There are four free cars in her neighborhood, but only one of them can reach Hazel's home. Can you tell which one? It's the third car. Hazel arrives at the airport. She takes a closer look at her ticket and faints. Can you guess why? The name of the airport on the ticket doesn't match the airport that she's in. Hazel needs to go to the correct airport as quickly as possible. These two drivers are eager to give her a ride. Can you tell who will reach the destination faster? Although the second car looks more expensive and chic, it has a flat tire. Therefore, Hazel should choose the first driver. Finally, Hazel boards her flight. She falls asleep right away. She wakes up in a while and realizes that someone has stolen her phone. Hazel questions three suspects. Bill says, I've been watching a movie within the last hour. I didn't look around. Sorry. Kyle says, I was sleeping too until you woke me up. And Sheila says, I'm afraid of flying, so I listen to soothing music with my eyes closed. Can you guess who stole Hazel's phone? Nobody. She just dropped it on the floor over here. See? It's dinner time. Kyle offers Hazel his dessert if she succeeds in guessing the date of his birth. Here's a hint. The day before yesterday, Kyle was 22. And next year, Kyle will be 25. Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? Today is the 1st of January, and Kyle's birthday was on the 31st of December. Therefore, Kyle was 22 on December 30th. Then he turned 23 on December 31st. This year, he will turn 24. And the next year, 25. Finally, Hazel lands in Nepal. She enters the baggage claim area and sees three odd things right away. Can you see them too? There's a dog in this bag. Animals don't come with regular luggage. This baggage cart lacks all wheels and floats in the air. And these boats are parked outside the window along with the planes. Hazel arrives at the meeting point for climbers at the local restaurant. But there's no one there. The cleaning lady says, I was busy cleaning the toilet and just got back. I didn't see anyone. The guard says, oh yeah, the meeting has been delayed for tomorrow, that's for sure. And the waiter says, I've been here all the time, and I haven't noticed any crowds of tourists. Who's lying? The guard. See this sign? The meeting takes place on the roof. That's why they didn't see the tourists. On the way to the roof, Hazel sees a woman who's cleaning a window on the 10th floor. Suddenly, she slips and falls. She doesn't have any safety equipment and nothing to soften her fall. But yet, she's not hurt. How can this be?
The woman was cleaning the window inside the building. <laughs> Finally, Hazel meets her group of climbers. But one of these people is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy has tentacles instead of a hand. He's definitely not from this planet. Hazel goes on an expedition with the group. She stops to take some pictures and gets lost. In a while, Hazel finds three roads leading to the next mountain village. But every path hides some adventure. There's a hungry snow leopard walking on the first path. There's a herd of Himalayan yaks on the second path. And road 3 leads through an avalanche risk area. Any movement can make the snow slide down. Which way is more or less safe? Hazel should choose the second path. Although these yaks look pretty scary, in fact, they're friendly plant eaters. Hazel checks into the local hostel. She leaves her bags in the room and goes to see the sights of the village. After a while, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her passport. Hazel calls the sheriff, and he interrogates four suspects. The hotel manager says, I was dealing with a tourist group that has just arrived. I didn't notice any robbers. The hostel owner says, I was dealing with the bathroom clog all day. The gardener says, I didn't enter the hostel. I was watering the roses in the garden. And the cleaner says, I was too busy feeding fish in the lobby. I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cleaner. Can you see any aquariums in the lobby? Hazel visits a local restaurant. The cook offers her three meals to choose from. Can you help her pick the safest option? There's a worm in these instant noodles. And there are too many flies around this rice. It's probably not very fresh. So, Hazel should choose this sandwich. In the village, Hazel meets the local guy, Luke. He offers to show Hazel the shortest way to the top. But first, Hazel has to solve his riddle. Luke and his wife have seven children. Half of them are sons. How is this possible? Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? They are all sons. Luke and Hazel begin the trip. On the way, he offers Hazel to visit the local magic caves. Hazel agrees, but eventually she gets lost inside one of the caves. She wanders around for a while and finds these three tunnels. There's a portal to the sun in the first tunnel. There's a box with an ancient magic gemstone inside the second tunnel. This gemstone curses anyone who sees it. And finally, the third tunnel hides a bunch of poisonous scorpions. Which way should Hazel choose to survive? The second one. The gemstone is locked in the box, so Hazel should just walk by it. Hazel needs to cross this toxic swamp to continue her trip. The only way to do so is to jump from one block to another. Can you help her choose the last stone wisely? Each block has a particular number. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. This sequence is formed by adding the number 4. Therefore, the remaining block should be 25, not 27. Hazel continues her journey and finds this weird sign engraved on a rock. Can you help her crack the meaning of this code? The arrow is pointing to the right. The message is mirrored. If the POT is on the right, 
it means that the T-O-P, or top, is on the left. Now Hazel knows the right direction. It's getting really cloudy. It'll rain soon. Hazel decides to hide in one of these three caves and have some lunch. Can you help her pick the safest place to stay? Take a look at the tracks. The first cave is probably home to a family of bears. Mother bears can get furious when it comes to their cub protection. As for the second cave, it's obvious that a human being has entered it and come back out, which is encouraging. And now, let's take a look at the third cave. A human entered it but never came out. Therefore, Hazel should choose the second cave. Finally, Hazel reaches the top of the mountain. Suddenly, a kind wizard pops out of nowhere and greets her. He suggests Hazel relocate to a hidden magic world. He says, I'll show you the gates if you solve my riddle. So listen carefully, I'm very fragile, and even just saying my name could break me. What am I? Any ideas what it might be? The correct answer is silence. The wizard chose Hazel the gates. There are three doors, but only one of them leads to the magic world. Can you help Hazel figure this out? Only the second path leads to the final destination. Bye bye Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made.
Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, you may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha. Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. 
Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. James is a famous blogger. Yes. He arrives at an abandoned haunted castle to film a video. Oh. James hasn't even entered the house yet, but he has already spotted five weird things about this place and freaked out. Can you see them too? These footprints on the ground are too giant. It's winter, but this cherry tree is blooming. It should be the moon in the sky, not Saturn. Also, this black cat has four paws, but leaves footprints from only three. James walks around the castle and gets lost in the garden maze. But in a while, he arrives at the front doors. Can you guess which way brought James here? Here's the only way to cross the maze. Unfortunately, the doors are locked. Mm. James needs to enter a four-digit code. Can you find any clues? Take a closer look at the door. There are four stars painted on it. The first one has five rays, the second has four rays, the third one, nine, and finally, the fourth one has seven rays. Therefore, the correct code is 5497. James enters the castle. It's very dark. Suddenly, someone grabs his camera and runs away to the library. Oh, no. James follows the thief. In the library, he faces a werewolf, a vampire, and a lady ghost. James questions them all. The werewolf says, I only come here for magic books to find a way to become human again. I'm not involved in the robbery. The lady ghost says, Someone spilled cherry juice on my favorite dress. I spent an hour in the bathroom trying to clean it. I didn't see anything suspicious. And the vampire says, it's early evening now. I got up just a minute ago. Why would I need your camera anyway? Who is lying? You cannot spill juice on a ghost. Therefore, she's lying. James enters another creepy room full of mirrors, but only one of them is fake. Can you help James find his real reflection? Only the second mirror shows the truth. Oh, yeah. James enters the toilet room, but all cabins are occupied. Can you spot a zombie among the visitors? The zombie is behind the left door. See the hands? They are greenish. Suddenly, James finds an invitation card for a party. The castle owner, Luna, is having a birthday. James enters the main hall and sees seven pretty witches sitting by the table. All look very similar, but each witch is wearing an outfit of a different color. It's very hard to tell who's the birthday lady, but after a couple of seconds, James approaches one of the witches, shakes her hand, and says, Thank you for inviting me over, Luna. How did he guess? Take a look at these gifts. Each witch brought a box wrapped in the color of her outfit. 
but the green box is absent because Luna is wearing the green dress. <laughs> Luna leads James to a company of four ghosts and says, Welcome, stranger. Meet my granny. Can you help James find out Luna's actual grandmother? It's the third ghost. She's wearing the same brooch as Luna. One of the witches, Zelda, likes James and wants to impress him. She shows him some pictures of her fabulous vacation, but James spots fake right away. How? Hmm. Take a look at the angle of the shadows in this picture. It's obvious that Zelda has photoshopped herself over this fancy beach view. Uh in the middle of the party, Luna gets a message from her boyfriend, Carl. He lives alone only 20 minutes away from the castle. Here's what he sends. Sorry for being late, honey. I'm still working. Luna yells, liar, and blocks him. Why? It's because of his selfie. There's a lipstick mark on the glass in the kitchen. Luna breaks up with Carl and uses a magic spell to teleport three handsome wizards to her dinner. When they arrive, Luna asks them just one question. Do you guys have a girlfriend? Hmm. Magnus replies, Lady, I work around the clock. I'm too busy for romance. Tristan says, Oh no, I've never had any serious relationships. Mm -hmm. Ambrose replies, Nah, I'm too picky. I'm still searching for the one. Hmm. Two guys are lying. Can you guess who? Magnus, there's a romantic tattoo with a female name on his chest. And Tristan, he has a tan line around his ring finger. Therefore, he had been wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> James goes to the kitchen to help Luna with coffee. He spots three odd things right away. Ooh. Can you see them too? The candle flame painted on the canvas is moving. There's a zombie hiding on the shelf behind the jars. Oh. And also Luna puts salt in the coffee pot. <laughs> Luna comes back to the hall and sees that someone had scratched her favorite oil painting on the wall. She interrogates four suspects among her guests. Hmm. Magnus says, whoa, I haven't even noticed the painting. Sophia says, sorry, I was having a phone call. Zelda says, no worries, honey. I can paint you a new one better than this. And Glinda says, I was in the bathroom. I don't know who ruined the painting. Who is guilty? Glinda. Her nail polish has the same color as the scratches on the painting. Luna takes James to the garden and turns him into stone. Can you find the enchanted James among these three statues? There shouldn't be any grass under a real statue. Meanwhile, James has only been a stone for a few minutes. Therefore, we need to choose the only statue with grass underneath. James asks Luna to let him go. She says, okay, but first, you should crack my riddle. If I had three watermelons and four oranges in one hand, and four watermelons and three oranges in the other hand, what would I have? Can you help James figure it out? solve this riddle, we need to think literally. The correct answer is, she would have very large hands. James wakes up in a dusty basement. He wanders around and finds three doors, but each way is guarded by a creepy magical creature. A hungry vampire is hiding behind the first door, and a fire-breathing dragon is waiting behind the second door, and there's a giant mutant rat behind the third door. Can you help James choose the best option? James should choose the first door. Take a look at the window. It's already dawn, which means the vampire is sleeping. James gets out of the castle and walks home. Suddenly, he spots a suspicious guy with a huge bag nearby a luxurious mansion. Hmm. James decides to question the guy. He says it was his house, and he carried his old stuff to give it away for charity. James calls the police right away. Why?
Take a look out the window. The glass is broken and the guy's coat is torn. Why would he need to leave his own house through the broken window? Therefore, he's probably a thief. Finally, James arrives home. He checks his emails and finds three letters from different witches. Linda offers him to study at her magic school. Zelda invites James to visit her villa in Antarctica. And Sophia invites him on a date. But only one of these emails isn't fake. Can you find it? Linda's email is just spam. She doesn't mention his name in the message, and it also contains a suspicious link. Zelda sends him a picture of her villa, but it's clearly not in Antarctica, so only Sophia's email is real. James agrees to go on a date. He arrives at the meeting point and faces not one Sophia, but five. Unfortunately, a wicked wizard had cloned her. He tells James, you only have one chance to choose the real Sophia. If you succeed, I'm gonna let her go. Can you help James? The first lady has gills, so she's probably fake. The second one's teeth are too sketchy. The fourth Sophia has two left hands, and the fifth one has lilac eyes, while the real Sophia's eyes are green. Therefore, James should choose the third lady. A hat and scarf cost $110. The hat is $100 more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost? $5. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Mm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. <laughs> Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a super massive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, it only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars. 30 pounds each. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge, since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit, which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed, and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, 
Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are 5 or 6, 7 or 8, 6 or 7, and 7 or 5. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. <laughs> Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather, and then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15? First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3, then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested. A case full of money and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. 
But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe? Michael should wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door.